Good evening, everybody. It's a great honor to be here. Um, the Royal Wedding, of course, is the theme for all of us. And as the Lord Lieutenant of Grace London, the Queen's representative in London, I've spent much of my last 10 days answering the most irritating question of my professional career, which was, are you going to the Royal Wedding? To which the answer was no, because I'm the Lord Lieutenant of Grace London, and this wasn't in London. And then the second most irritating thing is my son-in-law, who's done some rather wonderful things for sport in London, got an invitation to the Royal Wedding. And so I had to travel around with my son-in-law. He married my daughter. And, and this chap now has got the benefit of the advantage of being able to say, yes, actually, although my father-in-law couldn't make it, I was at the Royal Wedding. So what I thought I would do is make a few, I think, optimistic remarks about the opportunities, the, the prospect, I should say, for what we're all gathered here uh, this evening to discuss without making any further references to the Royal Wedding, maybe because it just upsets me. So, uh, let me talk a little bit, first of all, about London, which I am very proud to be Her Majesty's representative. About three years ago, I got on the train as I normally do. I live in Bristol Hampton Week to save the bridge in Kingston, and travelled up to Waterloo, and I got down to get on the Bakerloo line, which I've been doing on and off for the years I've lived in the UK and in London, which is most of my working life, to get on the Bakerloo line to get up to the West End, where my office is. And you all have done this journey, I would, I would imagine. It's very familiar to you. It's dark, there are lots of people, it's rush hour, people are getting on the train, everyone's grumpy, everyone's in their own little bubble, everyone's now irritated trying to be their phones as they get onto the train. And the person says, the train is coming, it'll be here in a moment. When the train gets here, please mind the gap. Mind the gap, mind the gap. It actually says a very large print on the platform, mind the gap. So I know that 40 years of experience. Train stops, doors open, we all start to get onto the train. For some reason that I would never understand, I stepped into the gap. <laughs> now, clearly it's my fault. It was a push, that was a lure, nothing else was happening, I stepped into this gap. Uh, before I go on, can I just give you a piece of an old man's advice here? Don't do this. <laughs> when they say mind the gap, they mean it. So I stepped into the gap, I fell down, it hurt a lot, it scraped all the skin off uh, my leather neck, it was horrible. My bag spilled all over the floor. And all I could think was, I have to stop the doors closing. So the doors close, the train will go, and there may be no door left in the place of London. So I'm focused only on survival. What happens? Two strangers lifted me out of the gap. Two strangers picked up my bag and put things back into the bag. A stranger gave up his seat for me to sit down, this old, shaking now man to sit down. And another stranger said, Are oh, you all right? And the minute I said, Yes, I'm fine, thank you, everybody in the crowd went back behind the newspaper and went back to be in London. So I mention that first of all because I think that's a great bellwether of a genuine goodwill in a city which is, of course, wonderful and cosmopolitan, but has a reputation around the world of being insular and, and selfish and so on. I was so grateful for that. The second story I'd like to share with you, or rather more recently, uh, not a royal wedding story, was the installation of the new Bishop of London, the Anglican Bishop of London, in St. Paul's Cathedral. I'm sure many of you, members, all of you, have been to St. Paul's Cathedral. It is magnificent. It's an enormous symbol of all sorts of things. It has a brilliant history. It was packed to the guns, to the, to the doors, heaving with people in finery and uniforms and, and uh, morning suits and so on. As the first ever female lady Bishop of London was installed. Now, there are possibly some here in the room that think that's not particularly surprising, but let me give you a short history lesson. The first ever Bishop of London was apparently installed in 189, which is not an address, but is a date. And in the intervening nearly 2,000 years, every single Bishop of London has been a man, and now was a lady. It was a very joyful occasion. Eventually, after all the mumbo jumbo and flummery of approvals and bowing and a couple of stop hymns and so on, she stepped up to the pulpit and she looked down on a pat. St. Paul's Cathedral, and this image will stand in my mind probably longer than Don't Jump Into the Gap will stand in my mind. And she looked around with an enormous beam on her face, held her arms up like this, and said to everybody, My beloved! And it, everybody burst into applause. So I turned to the chap next to me, who was a High Commissioner of uh, the Commonwealth Nation, and I said, Remind me again what all the fuss was about women priests in the Anglican Church? And he said, no, you're right, but you know what? Humanity moves on, we should be optimistic. So that's very good, we have a really nice service. At the end of the service, as all the dignitaries are, are walking out, 
the, the two sheriffs of the city of London followed behind the Lord Mayor. And one of those is a great friend of mine, Tim Hales. Tim Hales is the first ever open gay sheriff of the city of London. I have no doubt there have been many in the past, but this is the first open gay one. And it was a big deal that he stood to be elected and then was elected. So I turned to my now new best friend and said, oh, and you're, as you are new to this city, let me just explain. This is another symbol of progress. We have reasons to be optimistic. He is the first openly gay uh, sheriff in the city of London. And my new best friend folded his arms and looked away from me. Because that was a bit of progress too far, this gentleman sitting next to me. Why do I choose to tell you those two stories? I'm an optimist, I see progress, I see progress everywhere I go. I'm privileged to be in this great cosmopolitan city, and I know I'm privileged. Some of the things that I enjoy in this city don't happen in the rest of this country, never mind the sorts of places that Jeanette was talking about. However, what I do know in all of my experience of humanity is we are bound by a sense of goodwill. The goodwill that was exemplified by those strangers who helped me on the train. But, as my ex-best friend sitting next to me in St. Paul has reminded us, progress is a constant process and we must remain vigilant and we must keep moving the line forward. If events like this are to mean anything, it's because we're adding to progress and not merely meeting to pay the service to something. There is a gap still between full tolerance and full understanding and good human goodwill and we need to mind that particular gap. And I commend the Dialogue Society because the sole reason for it to exist is for us to use facts and rational arguments to close that gap. Thank you very much.